Welcome investors to my channel Fiscal Voyage. My name is Felix. So I've been doing a series of covering different companies that are considered dividend aristocrats. And the dividend aristocrats are companies that have been growing dividends for 25 consecutive years or more. So in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, T. Roll Price Group, which is a dividend aristocrat that's been growing dividends for 34 consecutive years. So if this is your first time visiting the channel, so make sure to hit the subscribe button to see for the next dividend aristocrat that I'm going to be covering tomorrow. So with that, let's get started with the stock analysis on T. Roll Price Group. Okay, the stock analysis on T. Roll Price Group Inc. Ticker symbol T. R. O. W. The company is a publicly owned global investment management firm that offers funds, advisory service, account management, and retirement plans and services for individuals, institutions. Um, I actually, uh, my 401k, my company has uh, funds with uh, a T. Roll Price. Um, and I actually invest uh, in that fund. It's been great so far, but just a little side note there. So let's go look at the fundamentals for the companies. From 2010 to 2019, the company had a nice revenue growth of compounded 10.1% annually, which is real nice. Uh, net income grew at a rate of a better rate of 13.7%. There isn't a S&P credit rating uh, for the company, but we'll look at their debt a little later. Um, operating income in that same 10-year period grew at 9.7%. So as you can see, the company has been growing very nicely uh, at a low double-digit rate, but very nicely. It's a very uh, old company. Uh, it's been around for a long time and a very mature company. So growing revenue and net income at over uh, double-digit is great. And earnings for that 10-year period has been growing at 14.7%. So they've been growing earnings very nicely. And the five-year earnings average growth is 16.3. So they've been growing earnings for the past five years better than their 10-year average, which is uh, you don't see that too often. Normally, the 10-year the period uh, is better than the shorter term because as company grows uh, in the long term, they tend to uh, decrease uh, growth as they get bigger and bigger. So that's very nice there. Net income, five-year average is 14.9. Again, it's better than the 10-year average. Uh, however, revenue is only at 7.5% for the five-year average, which is slightly lower than the 10-year average. But overall, the fundamentals looks good here. If we continue with the fundamental, 2019, the company earned uh, adjusted earnings of $8.70. Net margin came in very nice at 36.9%, which was higher uh, than 2018. Uh, net margin of 34 so they uh, increased net margin so that's good there return on equity at a nice 31.4 percent so return on equity is good uh, current yield 2.98 which is not outstanding you know the three and a half four percent yield or more but it's a nice uh, safe dividend yield actually uh, we we'll look at that shortly but a nine point 2.98% yield is very good. It's actually better than the five-year average of 2.68%. So you get a nice current yield uh, versus their five-year average. So that's good. There's a good indicator maybe that the company may be on the value. But we'll talk about that uh, later on in the video. Five-year growth rate at 11.6% for the dividend, which is great. Uh, and actually, the most recent dividend increase was 18.4% in February uh, like I mentioned, I own shares of this company, so when they announced that increase, I was excited there. 18.4% uh, 18 18 increase in February, uh, so that was great. Uh, but the five-year average, as you can see, is 11.6. And the consecutive, uh, I mean, excuse me, the dividend payout rate is only 48.6, which is based on 2020 earnings, which is lower than 2019's. But uh, we'll, you know, we'll talk about that next, but the payout ratio is safe at uh, only 48%. So I don't see the dividend being cut anytime soon. And obviously, they just increased it in February. So uh, that's confidence in the management team. And they've been growing dividends for 34 consecutive years. So they've been growing dividends uh, as basically as old as I am. Um, right now, 35. But as you can see, uh, 34 years of dividend growth is outstanding. Uh, they have a charter rule of 14.6, which is the five-year growth rate plus the current yield. So that's good there. It meets our criteria of 11, 12, and higher. Um, and like I said, the, the company so far is looking very nicely with the fundamentals. So we look at the balance sheet. As I mentioned earlier, the S&P credit rating doesn't have uh, credit rating. But 
debt to cap is only 3% and the current ratio is 8.36 which is uh, current asset divided by current liability so they have a lot more assets than liabilities um, so basically and the debt to equity ratio is 0 0.03 so basically the company doesn't have any debt uh, so that's outstanding um, so I'm very attracted to this uh, balance sheet so they have a very solid balance sheet uh, the price to book ratio uh, only 4.28 versus the five-year average of 3.96 so that is a um, little higher currently than the five-year average but this is okay because they have no debt so that's you know then with no debt you can't go bankrupt right so that's great there if we look at the future outlook 2020 analysts expect earnings to be seven dollars and 33 cents this is much lower than the eight dollars and 70 cents they made in 2019 of course with the coronavirus uh, the stock market dropped so they make a lot of the monies on um, fees and things uh, during the uh, for uh, the, you know how they make money with fees through their funds and such uh, so earnings is lower for 2020 but it's expected to pick up at eight dollars and fourteen cents for 2021 uh, it's still lower than the eight dollars and seventy cents they made last year but uh, it's heading in the right direction CFRA has a projected earnings growth of 5% for the next three years and my dividend drill return model has a projected total return of 12.4% so this is great this meets my criteria of 9% uh, or higher so this is great here and the company has a current PE of 14.9 which is based on the 2019 earnings of $8.70 and 4 PE of 16.1 which is higher than the five-year average but however if you consider uh, forward PE based on 2021 expected earnings you have a PE of 14.5 which makes it lower than the five-year average so but more or less the company based on PE ratio uh, looks fairly valued maybe even slightly overvalued but let's look at the fast graph fast graph again the black line is the monthly closing price the orange is the earnings with a multiple of 15 and the blue line is a normal multiple of 16.7 as you can see here uh, based on fast graph uh, it looks to be fairly valued with a PE of uh, 15 um, this is based on Friday's closing price of $120.93 uh, and you can see here that uh, it has a blended PE of 14.9 and again um, based on uh, 2020 earnings of $7.33 uh, is a drop of 16% versus 2019 earnings of $8.70. But if you look a few years prior, the company has been growing earnings quite nicely. In 2017, it grew earnings at 32%, uh, 2018 at 16%, and 2019 at 20%. So the company for the past three years has been growing earnings very nicely. And they were projected to grow earnings uh, this year as well, in the beginning of the year before the coronavirus uh, pandemic hit. Um, as you can see, uh, 2021 earnings are expected to be $8.14. So uh, it's a growth rate of 11% versus 2020 expected earnings. So they're heading in the right direction. Um, as you can see, the total projected annual rate of return is 9.5, which is not outstanding, but it's a very respectable, decent uh, rate of return and such a high quality company with very basically no debt. Um, so it's, it's definitely a good. I think uh, opportunity now but we'll, we'll talk about that in the next slide with the fair value price but as you can see the company tends to follow uh, more or less the 15 to 16 PE ratio and you could get it at, right now at a 14.9 PE again that's based on 2020 uh, I mean 2019 earnings but uh, looks fairly value here hey we look at the fair price CFRA has a fair price of $130.62, Morningstar at $120, Fastgraph as we just saw $136.12, and Yahoo $121.69, and my dividend discount model analysis at $131.93. For my dividend discount model analysis, I use a 8% dividend growth for the next three years, and 7% after that with a discount rate of 10%. For the uh, next three years, you know, they had a dividend growth of 18% earlier this year, but I think a more conservative rate is 8% uh, for the next three years and 7% after that. So that's how we got $131.93. Averaging out the five, 
we get a fair price of $128.26 and currently the, com the company goes for $118.34 so that means it's undervalued by 8.4% this isn't the 10% or higher margin of safety that I would like but this company is very high quality very uh, you know the debt is basically not existing so uh, so but that's why I have a recommendation as a buy at current prices so I have a buy recommendation for T Row price group and that's because uh, even though it's fairly valued, it's slightly undervalued, I love the balance sheet. The, the company has basically no debt. The earning growth for the past five years has been tremendous at 16.3%, so that's great. The most recent dividend increase of 18% is tremendous. I wouldn't say the current price is a pounding buy, you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's uh, one of those back up the truck at current prices, but I think if you don't have a current position in this company, it is, I think it's a good time to maybe open a small position, maybe around 1% uh, or 2% of your portfolio. I own shares of this company. Uh, I bought it a few years back and it's done very well for me and I continue to hold shares. So I don't see myself buying more shares now but I think if someone uh, who has their own shares of this company, I think it's a good time to uh, purchase a few shares uh, and open a position. The revenue growth, the net income growth, you know, the earnings growth has been tremendous for the past 10 years and five years. And again, that dividend history is, is great. So I think it's a buy and I hope you guys uh, enjoy the video. And again, if it's your first time watching, make sure to hit the subscribe button for tomorrow's next dividend aristocrats coverage that I will be doing. So I'll see you guys tomorrow and have a great one.